Okay, in this video, we are going to have a look at the RP2040 microcontroller on a very small printed circuit board. Now, I have been searching for a microcontroller board that has the smallest footprint with the most GPIO pins, and this is what I found. It's made by Waveshare, and it's called the RP2040 Tiny. Now, I needed a very small PCB because I wanted to mount this on the back of an RC receiver, like this one here. So it mounts on the back, so there's enough room. And I'm running code on the microcontroller for an S-Bus decoder and an I-Bus decoder for product development. Now Waveshare has made this board very small by removing the USB connector, the boot button, and the reset button, and they put that on a separate board, you can see here. So there's a separate board with the reset button, the boot button, and the USB connector. And there's a ribbon cable, you can see on the side. Now that ribbon cable plugs into this board, like this, plugs into here. Now you do your development, then you unplug it. Now you can embed this board in your project. Okay, I got my boards connected together by the ribbon cable. Now the program software onto the microcontroller, we use the board on the left. We use the boot button. So you hold down the boot button, and at the same time you plug in the USB connector, which is connected to your computer. Now this is a USB-C connector. Release the boot button. Now the microcontroller will look like a flash drive. So now we could drag and drop a UF2 file into the flash drive. It will disappear and it will become programmed into the microcontroller. Now you could, you could load MicroPython, but in this video I have been using zep 2 and macrisp 4 Okay, I uploaded macrisp 4 onto my microcontroller. And I soldered some header pins onto the RP2040 tiny board so I could plug it into my breadboard. Also have an FTDI module plugged into my breadboard and it's jumpered for 5 volts. So I'm feeding 5 volts to the microcontroller. So this pin here is plus 5 volts. This pin here is ground. The RX and TX lines of the FTDI are connected to the TX and RX lines of the microcontroller through GPIO pins 0 and 1. That's your TX and RX. So now I can gain access to the fourth operating system on the microcontroller through the serial port using a serial terminal program like TerraTerm. Okay, here's the pinout of the RP2040 tiny board. And if you look at the very top left, there's our 5 volt input. Next pin is ground. Then we have 3.3 volt output, so there's a voltage regulator on board the, the RP2040 Tiny. And if you go to the very right top, we got GP0 and GP1, that's our UART0, TX and RX. That's connected to the FTDI, that's how I get access to the fourth operating system. So we go GP0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 on the right. And you go over to the left, we got 14, 15. Then it jumps to 26, 27, 28, 29. So those are all our GPIO pins. We have a NeoPixel. It's right there. It's the WS2812 RGB LED. And it's connected up to GP16. So remember that. So we'll look at the schematic. And on the very top, we have user mode selection pad. So there's two jumpers. We could jumper. It's GP24 and GP25. So we could jumper them to ground. And we'll have a look at the schematic. So that's the basic pinout of the RP2040 tiny board. Okay, here's a close-up of the RP2040 tiny board. And we're going to have a look at those two user mode jumpers on the GP24 and GP25 GPIO. So if you look at the very top right, right here, that's GP24 jumper. The next one down is GP25. So applying a jumper, either a solder bridge or a wire, we actually ground GP24 or GP25. Okay, next we're going to have a look at the user mode jumpers. So this is our RP2040 microcontroller and here's our GP24 and GP25 pins and they're both pulled up to 3.3 volts internally and here's our, our pads, our jumper pads to ground. Now with two jumpers we have four combinations we got 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0 and 1, 1. So when the computer boots up the first thing it does it's going to read the two jumpers and if it sees a 0, 0 it's going to run the iBus software. If it sees a 0, 1, it's going to run the SBus software. So if you have different variants of software, you just jumper what you want, what your customer wants, and you could just have one, one software loaded into the microcontroller, but you could have four variants depending on whatever the jumpers are. So in my case, I'm only having two variants, iBus and SBus, so I jumper them accordingly. If 0, 0, if they're both jumpered, it's going to run iBus, if the first one is jumpered and the second one is left open, it's going to run SBus. Okay, here's a schematic diagram of the RP2040 tiny board. 
If you look at the top middle, there's our, there's our voltage regulator. So Vsyst is 5 volts. It's input. And the output is 3.3 volts. On the very right, we have our flash. Then we have our RGB LED. That's a NeoPixel. And it's connected up to GPIO 16. That's the control. That's DN. And we have a pull-up resistor, a 10K to 3.3 volts on GPIO 16. If we go down further, there's our jumpers, our GPIO 24 and 25 user mode jumpers. Now they suggest to put in zero ohm resistors, but you could put it a solder bridge or wire. So there they are there, jumper to ground. And then the very bottom right is the pinout. And what's really nice, if you look at GPIO 20, 27, 28, 29, they have a 450 ohm resistor in series. So we could hook up an LED without using a, a current limiting resistor, which is pretty handy. Okay, here's a bit of fourth code that's running on the RP2040 that's controlling the NeoPixel, the WS2812 RGB LED. So we send three values to the NeoPixel. We send a blue value, a green value, and a red value. So here's blue value, 255. Now the values are from 0 to 255, so 0 would be off, and 255 would be full brightness. So we're, we're turning on the blue LED, the blue part of the NeoPixel. And here we're turning on the green part, and here we're turning on the red part. So just by typing blue, we'll get a blue LED. Green, we'll get a green LED. Red, we'll get a red LED. And bright turns them all on, 255 to all three. And we get a bright white color. And to turn them off, we send all zeros. That's pretty simple. So we just have to type the color that we want from the new pixel, and it will come on. And these four words blink the, the, the colors. So if you want to blink blue, or red or green or bright all it does it, it sucks the color blue turns it on for 500 milliseconds then it turns it off for 500 milliseconds and it does that in a loop until we hit any key on the keyboard so now we have control of the color of the neopixels and what I do when I power up the, my, my software if I'm running SBUS I'll have a blue color for about three seconds so the user could tell it's running the SBUS and if we're running the iBus software, then I'll have the red color on the NeoPixel for about three seconds. So the user will know that it's running iBus. So that's what I'm using. So this is how we can control the NeoPixel on, on board the RP2040 board. Okay, I have TerraTerm up and running on my computer. That's connected to my FTDI module. So I can send it some commands now. So I'll send blue, I'll type blue on my keyboard. And there's our blue. I'll type red. There's our red. I type green, there's our green, I type bright, turn them all on, there's bright, and I'll go blink, blue, and any key will shut it off. So those are simple commands to control the NeoPixel on the RP2040 Tiny. Okay, I have TerraTerm up running on my computer, and it's connected to my RP2040. So we'll have a look around. So we'll start out with the pins. We'll have a look at all the pins. So there's pins 0 to 16, and then it jumps from 24 to 29. And you can see they're all inputs. Now 24 and 25 have pull-ups. That's the mode jumpers, so they're pulled up. So we could have a look at the inputs. So if we go to the very right, this is GP0, and this is GP1, and you keep counting. So these two are the UART. And this is GP16. This is the DN of the NeoPixel, and it has a 10K pull-up resistor, so it's showing a 1. And these are the, the two jumpers, the mode jumpers. Now, they got pull-up resistors, so they're showing 1s. So if I run that continuously, so if I go do a character turn and look at the inputs, and we do that every 10 milliseconds, and do that many times, now you can see GP24 and 25, they're high they have pull-up resistors. Now I'm going to try to short out the jumper with my screwdriver and see if I could do it. And it should go to zero. There it is. There's zero. And there's one, zero. So it's it's seeing the, the jumpers. So I could stop and go back to the pins again. Now GP, GP29, pin 29, I want to make an output. So pin 29 output because I want to hook up an LED to that pin. And if you look at the pins, now pin 29 is an output. 
Okay, I have an LED connected up to GP29, which you can see here, and there's no current limiting resistor. So if I just type pin 29 high on my keyboard, hit enter, she comes on. So that's my little walkthrough of this uh, little board. So if you need a very small board for embedded projects, check out the RP2040 Tiny.